All right, now that we've built all the tools we need for our tool belt, we are now going to do an example uh, for polar motion using R theta coordinates. So in this example, we have an arm, okay? This arm itself is in fixed axis rotation around this origin point right here, okay? So the arm itself rotates around that point. In addition, there's a screw, and this screw you can think has an independent motor from the arm, or excuse me, the motor that controls the arm rotation itself. And the screw is going to allow this block to either slide outward or back toward the origin, um, away or towards that origin point. Okay, so you can think that the screw is fundamentally going to adjust the length of R and also R dot and R double dot. And then the motor controlling the rotation of the arm itself is going to control the theta, the theta dot, and the theta double dot. Okay, so that's the general idea here. What we want to find is a, um, an equation, a relationship, to find the velocity and acceleration vectors of this block. Okay, this block right here, block P. Not only are we going to find it, we're going to sketch those vectors so we can fully show that we understand what's going on. Okay, so working through this kind of step by step, the first step is to recognize that we were given a theta with respect to degrees. Not a bad thing overall, but just realize if we wanted to convert the radian equivalent, we could take this times pi divided by 180 and end up with 2.094 radians. In dynamics, if in doubt, go with radians. What it really comes down to is if you're multiplying this theta times any distance, like an equation V is equal to theta times R. In this form right here, 100% of the time, this theta must be in radians. However, if you're finding, say you want to find a component and you say F sub X is equal to the sine of theta um, times F, then this theta can either be, be in degrees or radians. It just depends on if your calculator is set to degrees or radians. Okay, so kind of two different uses of these angles. But this is the one really to watch for, is if we end up with uh, multiplying any, any other value times an angle, that angle has to be in radians. Okay, so that's kind of like a little side note there. So there's our theta, 2.094 radians. We have a, a known theta dot given in the problem, 0.1 radians per second. There is an angular acceleration. So basically we have a positive theta dot. Let me draw what that looks like. That is positive from the right-hand rule. Okay, so that's theta dot. And theta double dot is opposing that, right? It's a negative value. And so we could draw, back going back in this direction, that would be theta double dot. So theta dot is rotating positive from the right-hand rule and it's slowing down. And then we have that r is a function of two sine of theta. Okay, so that's this r right here is varying as a function of the position theta. And so it's actually this r function that we're going to have to convert with our implicit differentiation to figure out what are the values for r dot and r double dot. Okay, so r dot being the time rate of change of r, once again, taking a time derivative of 2 sine of theta, we end up that r dot is equal to the 2 comes along for the ride, the derivative of sine is cosine, and then we put a theta on the inside, and then we multiply this times theta dot, right? Theta dot being d theta dt. I can also do the same thing for going from r dot to r double dot. Now once again, I have to bring in the product rule here as well. Let me go with the color coding. So 2 times, we'll go with uh, blue for this piece and red for the last piece here. So the first term here is cosine of theta, and then the derivative of theta dot is theta double dot, and then we add to that um, the derivative of the first term, which gives us a negative sine of theta, and that's going to be times theta dot, the derivative of the inside piece, and then times the uh, second term there, which is also theta dot. All right, so that gives me my equations. Now, 
something I want to do here is I want to know actually what the instantaneous values of these are. And so I could do some plugging in. And so we know at basically these values right here, I want to know what's going on with R, with R dot and R double dot. So plugging in 120 degrees into my R equation, if my calculator is set to degrees or 2.094, if my calculator is set to radians, I can find that this radius instantaneous is r is equal to 1.732 and that's in meters and then um, r dot by plugging in the known values of theta and also theta dot we can find this is equal to negative 0 0.1 meters per second and then finally our double dot is equal to now this is a big substitution here plugging in those four different theta related values we get a pretty small value, 0 0.0227, and that'll be in meters per second squared. Okay, so those are the instantaneous values of those three radial terms um, at the given theta, theta dot, and theta double dot. All right, so the next step is essentially to plug these values into our equations. Okay, so our equations for velocity and also acceleration. We know that the velocity vector is equal to, I'll just actually break this down into VR and V theta just to kind of separate things out. So we know this is equal to R dot. So simply bringing that value in negative 0 0.1 and that's in meters per second. And then we have V theta, which is equal to R times theta dot. Okay, now notice here, I talked a little bit about units of theta dot and theta double dot. Both of these in radians per second and radians per second squared, those are exactly the units we want. So we don't have to convert those at all. Can just leave them be. So my distance of 1.732 times 0.1 radians per second, I end up with the value here of uh, equal to 0 0.1732. It's also in meters per second. And so we find that V as a vector, putting this in the square brackets, is negative 0 0.1 comma 0 0.137, excuse me, 173. I'll put the two there as well, that whole thing in meters per second. Now to do the same thing with our acceleration terms, we have our AR. And uh, let me just make one little edit here. I just noticed that I had my vector sign up above. Let me just delete that off, put a little X through it, just because I didn't put in my unit vectors. Um, so we're really just talking about the magnitude of VR. And I'll do the same thing here for my AR and A theta. Just keep them to scalar magnitudes. Um, well, I'm still going to adapt all of my different signs um, to those. And so our we know that our AR is equal to our double dot minus r times theta dot squared plugging in those values we find the ar is equal to 0 0.2054 and that's going to be in meters per second squared and then our a theta is equal to r times theta double dot that second time derivative of theta plus 2 r dot theta dot Okay, just directly from our equation sheet uh, or your work above. And we find that this is going to be to a negative value, 0 0.089 in meters per second squared. So bringing these together, the vector A um, for that particle P is going to equal the R term first, 0 0.0054, and then the theta term, negative 0 0.0. Eight, nine. I really encourage you to work through all this calculator work, um, not only the substitutions above, but also these down here, just practice your order operations. You can store values in your calculator, whatever works for you to um, make these um, accurate computations. All right, so now to map these onto our actual system, I'm gonna draw another quick drawing down here. So here's my origin point. So here is my R axis coming away from that origin point given this current angle. Now remember in this problem that we were given theta um, from horizontal, okay? So horizontal over on the right, this was our measured theta. 
Therefore, it tells us that here is going to be um, our, our particle or our block P. So our positive theta axis has to be coming down here to the left. Once again, it's in the direction of an increasing theta angle. If theta had been measured from horizontal over here wrapped up, then actually theta axes would be going in the opposite direction. Okay, so just note that theta axes in the direction of an increasing theta angle. So what we found with our velocity vector, so our velocity vector had a negative r component and a positive theta component, um, generally the same magnitude, a little bit bigger in the theta, so let's kind of go this direction here. So let's call this V. Once again, we had a negative V R and a positive V theta. Okay, so this is like part B where I said sketch these terms. And then the acceleration had a positive R component and a negative theta component. Okay, so if I extend out my negative theta axis going this direction. My acceleration, let's see, this one's about ooh, 10 times larger in the theta than in the r, so this is going to be a pretty low angle. So this would be my acceleration vector, where I had just a small component here in the positive r, okay, that would be my ar, and then a much larger component along the theta here, this would be a theta. Right, well, once again, we could create a parallelogram if we wanted to of those components. So this helps me define the velocity and also the acceleration of this polar system, right? And the key thing here, how I can recognize even from the start of the problem that I need to use some polar coordinates is that I have fixed axes rotation, right? That's a really key thing. I was not given information directly about the path. I was given information about what is theta and what is r, okay? Pretty much anytime you start seeing theta dots, theta double dots, um, anything asking about r dots, r double dots, that's gonna push you likely into a polar coordinate system. If you get information about the path, the curve of the path, the direction of the path, the velocity along the path, that's gonna to tend to be more of a tangent normal system. If your acceleration or information is non-changing directions, right? Just like, just like projectile motion, where you always have a gravitational acceleration in the negative y direction, that's gonna push you toward using Cartesian coordinates, okay? So the problems are fundamentally different, uh, but this one here was a polar motion example. Thanks for your attention today.